This is the all new Insta360 Go 3. I'm gonna show you what you can do and tell you all about it. I didn't bother with a real unboxing because I got impatient and last night I unboxed it at home all by myself and I filmed my cat for a while which was very fun. The new Go 3 adopts this kind of like traditional action camera style housing. It's funny to call it a traditional action camera because it's very untraditional as an action camera. It's in this kind of familiar rectangle shape with the lens on the front. Now what's very different is on the rear, we have a display that takes up the entire rear, but it's also, dun 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 dun, it's a little flip up display and it seems really well built and rigid and the touch screen is responsive. It's probably my favorite display on any Insta360 camera ever. So that's, that's pretty good. And on one hand, it's nice that I can just flip this up, look at myself and be like, hey, I'm sitting in the dirt. <laughs> but really what makes this screen body so special is that even when I detach the camera here, I still have my screen connected. And what's so great about that is that I can check my white balance and my composition. I can make sure everything is set just right. These cameras are the cameras that you put where no other camera can go. They are so small, you could drop this at the bottom of a toaster. I don't know if you should, but I'm going to. You don't have to now pull out your phone, connect it to your phone, and start wiggling around to make sure the composition's good. You just already have a wireless monitor. Like, that's so sick. Move it around, make sure that's what you want it to look like. Maybe it needs to be a little lower. And now you've got the shot you are looking for. Mwah. Wireless monitors. Awesome. Good job, Insta360. Okay, let's go test it out uh, everywhere because I'm going to be taking this to a poor shoot today, uh, skateboarding next week, and then the week after that we're going to Estonia. So this thing is going to get used a lot. The Go 3 shares a lot of similarities to the Go 2, but it basically improves them in every way. The frame rates are better, the resolution is better, the mounting options are better, the battery life is better, the heat is better, the case is better, it's basically better in all of the ways. One of the things that I noticed when comparing it to the Go 2, just for my own uses, is that the microphone has noticeably improved. It sounds much more natural and less, I don't know if I would say hollow, but it just sounds better. So this is what it sounds like. I'm currently just walking through a field. I thought there would be a trail. There might be bears. <laughs> What I love so much about the Go 3 is that it fits the two styles of video making that I love to make. One, where the camera takes full control and I'm just getting shots as quickly as I can. And the other, where it gives me the control so that I can be as creative as I'd like to be. We might refer to these two different ways of shooting as simplicity and complexity. So let's start out by talking about simplicity. If you've used an Insta360 camera in the past, then you probably already know this, but they have what I would call industry-leading stabilization. It is shockingly good. So what that means is anyone from your grandma to your newborn baby can pick up this camera and get stable footage right out of the box. And then on the complexity side of stabilization, you also have the option of choosing between three different levels of standard stabilization. So that's for things like walking all the way up to mountain biking or something like that. Furthermore, if you shoot in a mode called free frame, which we're gonna talk about a little bit later, which I accidentally call free form sometimes. From turning it off completely, which works great when you have it locked to an object and you want that object to stay static, or if you have it set up on a tripod slash 
monkey tail. And in that mode, you're gonna be able to have horizon lock, which is gonna keep the horizon completely level no matter what as well as a mode that simulates FPV, which is gonna allow the camera to feel more curvy and twisty and floaty, yet still incredibly stable. The mode that I'm referring to as simplicity is called video in the camera, and you can have that in auto exposure, and it's gonna give you a file type when you're done recording that's just standard. And you can watch that on your computer, put it on a timeline, share it with your grandma, put it on social media. It's going to be really easy to work with or watch right away. And in this mode, you can choose between a bunch of picture profiles from standard or what I think most people should probably choose vivid or what I like to choose flat. But when it comes to taking full control over my own creativity and the shots I want to get, I like to switch it into the free frame video mode. Right now I'm recording in what's called free form video mode and that used to be called pro video mode on the go too. And what that is, is it's recording from the entire square sensor, giving you the option to do various versions of stabilization, but more specifically aspect ratio selection in post. And this has so many use cases just for personal use. If I'm making a YouTube video and then I wanna create some type of Instagram reel or whatever to promote that YouTube video, I can now take these clips, make them vertical so they look even better for social posting. Over the last five years, this has become increasingly not just popular, but it's been a requirement for a lot of professional video. However, there is another way that you can utilize this freeform video mode that might be my new favorite. Similar to how on Insta360's X3 and other 360 cameras, you get the option in post to keyframe your camera movements, your roll, your tilt, your field of view. You can actually do that now on the Go 3's freeform video mode. Obviously you aren't gonna be panning behind yourself, but I found being able to like tilt and roll the camera with a little bit of subtle keyframes can actually add a lot to your footage, especially when you're filming all by yourself. Holy cow, there are so many ants around me. Okay, I gotta, I gotta move from this area. The mosquitoes and the ants are just so bad. <laughs> One feature that's become increasingly important for my videos is a pre-record function. And the Go 3 has three different levels. I think it's 10, 15, and 30 seconds of pre-record. What that means is before you physically press record, the camera will be buffering and recording functionally up to 30 seconds of footage at a time. What's great about that is when I'm trying to learn a new trick on my skateboard, I can just have the camera set up and anytime I land or fall down kind of funny, I can just head over to the camera, hit the record button, and now I have just the moments and anything thereafter that I wanted. I don't need to leave the camera recording for hours on end in order to get the few moments that I actually want. I'm done. That's a painful elbow. The camera itself is now waterproof to some depth I'll never end up swimming, and the case is also water and splash resistant. Now, another area that the Go 3 has taken a big step up is in its mounting options. So there are magnets on the bottom here, no quarter 20, no action prongy things. You could magnet this to things if you wanted to, but I wouldn't. However, they have these kind of like teeth on the side that work with uh, this new mounting option. So basically, you have the camera and you just, and now that's it. Now you can take any of your accessories that you would use to mount the body of the Go 3, and I'll show you, pop this off, you pull the camera out, and what's great is just same thing, magnet it on, and it is locked into place. You can just set this up however you want, and this is not going to come it still has all of the magnets on the rear if you want to just attach this to your refrigerator or whatever. If you're going to put this on your helmet and go mountain biking, this is going to give you a lot more confidence that it's uh, not going anywhere. They've kept the exact same uh, easily swappable filter threads. I've said this in a bunch of videos before, but I really don't like how most pieces of modern camera equipment require your phone to connect to them in order to get the most out of them or to change the settings or to, to view the whatever. I want my phone to be my phone. So like leave my phone alone. So form factor here, 
absolutely fantastic. Having a large screen on the back that makes navigating settings really easy, having a flip up display, which means you can vlog with it really easy and make sure things are looking good. But then more than that, the icing on the cake is having the wireless display. I love it. I think you'll love it. Good job, Insta360. Thanks for making this thing.